Squeaky chair. My squeaky chair. Con number one. Oh, yeah. So last time we did something that was just entirely against my nature, which was being positive. <laughs> this chair, man. But now, but now, now we're going to get to the real meat and bones. We're going we're gonna to get to the real drama of it. Cons. Cons of the jet program. So before I made a lovely video, which is probably somewhere up here, that described some of the real, really cool benefits of the JET program and some of the really cool reasons why you should probably join the JET program if you're thinking about it. But today, we're going to do something that's far more in my nature, which is just to complain. So here is my list of a bunch of stuff that sucks about JET. Number one. There's a reasonable chance that you're going to be going to multiple schools. It's probably not too likely that it's just one school that you're at. You're probably going to go to maybe two or three, or in some cases, 15. And in most of those cases, you're going to be allocated a very special desk. This desk is going to be the ALT desk. And as soon as you lay your eyes on it, it's going to take you absolutely no time at all to realize that you've just been given the worst desk. <laughs> Seriously, there is no language barrier on earth that cannot translate the fact that you have been given the worst desk and the worst chair. You think that these creaky noises are my chair? No, 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 no. It's actually my spine after having used these terrible chairs for a year. <laughs> You're gonna walk in, you say, hi, exam ass. Teacher's gonna direct you to a lovely little corner of the office, and in that corner, you're gonna realize that you have been allocated to the gulag. That is just it. <laughs> it's not the worst thing, but you know, it still sucks. Number two. So this is perhaps the most obvious one in terms of just what gets asked and what usually gets talked about. And it's the fact that you have absolutely no say at all in where you're going, how many schools you're going to, what level of school you're going to, where in Japan you're gonna be situated. You just, you have no say. You could be in Tokyo, you could be in the country, you could be all the way up north or all the way down south. It doesn't matter. With your placement, it's kind of like rolling a dice. If the dice had like, 3,000 sides. You just don't know. There's no way of knowing and pretty much until you get the email come through that tells you where you're going, you've no real way to plan. There's no real way to think through or, or to try and prep yourself beyond just general Japan preparation. Seek, And if you do try to seek out advice, you're going to come across our next tip. Number three. Every situation is different for absolutely every single variable. This is a piece of advice that pretty much gets thrown about everywhere on jet forums, at jet conferences, jet stuff. It's basically the motto of jet. Does jet have a motto? Jet program. I don't know. Let's make one up. Uh, teaching abroad and internationalization of jets. Now the frustrating thing about this is that it's kind of true. Every situation is genuinely different. It's pretty much impossible to compare my placement with the likes of a Tokyo or a Fukuoka or Osaka placement. They're completely different. And as we mentioned before, some people will get one school, two schools. They'll get maybe one school that's a high school or maybe an elementary school. And then some people will get 15 schools. Bearing in mind, on top of that, you have different BOEs across the whole program. And so I know jets that have BOEs that seem much more hands-off. And then I know jets who have BOEs that are very, very involved in their jets' lives and helping them get bills sorted and things like that. So it's a frustrating piece of advice because it's, it feels kind of like a blank slate that gets thrown on everything. But unfortunately, it is kind of accurate. So number four. So unfortunately, outside of the JET program itself, JET experience doesn't really matter too much to employers. It's kind of like a gap year, essentially. And most people are going to look at it that way. Now, there are some JETs that come over that view it that way and they take it in that stride and they seem to do all right. They do one or two years and then head home. But it can be very, very easy to come on JET, sink yourself in for four years, five years, and then go home without having done anything outside of JET. 
and realize that in your own country, you're actually in the same position you were before you left. You've just got a five year gap or a three or four year gap on your CV or your resume. And that can really be a struggle. So whilst it is a full time job and it is definitely an experience, it is just really that it's an experience. It's probably not the experience that you need to go into your future career or whatever it is that you're moving on to in life. Unless you are, of course, one of those few jets who genuinely wants to get some teaching experience and whatnot. But even then, the experience taking it back to your home country might not be the best in comparison to working at a school there in your own country. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach the JET program. You can view it as a gap year or, or a couple of gap years. You can view it as kind of a, an experience to come out and see Japan and do this or do that. But I think the most common reason, certainly the most common reason amongst people that I talk to for coming out here is that people just kind of wanted to have an adventure and they just wanted to come out to Japan and just see what was going on. And JET is a really good opportunity to do that. It's a really good job and the money's pretty good for what we're doing. But the problem is that you can get stuck and a lot of people absolutely will get stuck. They'll hit maybe two or three years and start realizing that they haven't pushed themselves outside of the JET program to achieve anything. And now they have a gap on their CV or on their resume that can't be filled with anything. They don't have any extra qualifications. They just have this experience in Japan. And on top of that, they might even be kind of done with Japan they might want to leave and just go home and go back to their own country and it can be really really frustrating because you don't want to go back and then be in the same position you were whenever you left um number five it has to be big it's the big finale um I don't know Pfft. probably more likely to get nuked by North Korea So that was five things that are kind of not so great about the JET program, but honestly, overall the program's a fantastic program. If you're looking at coming to Japan or if you're just looking at programs in general, you've probably had a look at the JET program. And there's a reality that people who have had a bad time on the program tend to be far more willing to be vocal about it than people who had an all right or pretty good time on the program. You're gonna find more complaints online than you are sort of people just saying that they had an all right day or they had an all right time. So take it with a pinch of salt. Every situation is different. <laughs> and I say all this as someone who's pretty happy on the JET program currently. I don't really have any negative feelings or thoughts towards the program in general. The stuff I don't like, the stuff I do like. There's not been a job that I've had that that hasn't been the case. So don't let it get you down. Don't let it discourage you from applying to the program if you're thinking about it. It's a fairly long application process as well. So if you want to apply and just do what I did, which is essentially throwing your hat into the ring and just seeing what will happen. You never know. But you know what's not different? Squeaky chairs. And squeaky chairs need people like you to subscribe to the channel because if you don't subscribe, the chair might squeak its last squeak. So if you're a squeaker, squeak and squeak the squeaky subscribe button right now.